before we get into the introduction, let me jump them around and do it again. Thank you, Charlie. It's nice for Wallace himself to come up and talk to you people. It uh, always interested me that people in Atlanta are, are as interested in Tech and Georgia football as they are. Many of you didn't go to either school. Many of you went away to school, moved to Atlanta, and you've adopted, you've adopted either Tech or Georgia. And uh, many of you have become our best alumni. Actually, you take our, our defeats a lot better than some of our more loyal alumni, so to speak. <laughs> It's always nice to be with Wallace, and I want to make a couple of remarks to him. Uh, Wallace, what you said about me predicting that victory over there in Athens about us throwing that touchdown pass, things like that, and you, you went in that Auburn game last year, if you've got quarterbacks like Wade Mitchell or Pepper or Tarkenton playing for you, you can predict those things. <laughs> you just haven't had that many good quarterbacks playing for you yet. <laughs> I've heard Bernie Moore, who coached Wallace many times, say he's one of the greatest ends to ever play in the South. And he was a fierce competitor. And I've always respected and admired Wallace's uh, competitiveness and his uh, daring and challenging. But last year, I felt sure whenever he went through and undefeated in this conference and Ole Miss had a pretty good football team and they thought they were pretty good in this conference, I thought old Wallace would come out and challenge them to a bowl game <laughs> to see who was the best in this conference, but he didn't do it. <laughs> do you? But uh, many times, the time we get through recruiting the boy, we spoil him so he won't play for anybody. But besides, besides that this this thing of recruiting and and getting the edge on the fella gets into some, some funny things one of my close friends who's coaching not in our conference but close to us he got the idea and he got it passed he got his faculty to pass a rule that they could have a physical ed course and it would be coached taught by one of his coaches and there's nothing in the rule that, where he's violated and then there's another coach who on picture taking day, which is the day before we start practice, and this is a new one on me, I hadn't heard about this. Uh, you can take all the pictures you want of your boys in uniform, but you can't have any practice except for the picture taking people. But boy, he got him a bunch of managers with a, with a camera and they ain't got no film in that camera, but they're down there taking pictures of scrimmage and scrimmage and scrimmage. And <laughs> he got him a good day's workout. There's not anything that these coaches don't think of. I defy anybody. These young coaches are just murdering some of us old guys. Folks like Paul Dietzel and Frank Brawls, honestly, they make butts themselves sit up at nights trying to think of something to keep up with. But it's a great game. And it's a competitive game. And if you don't think it's competitive, and if you ever played football 10 or 15 years ago, don't you believe it's the same game you played it then? You get hit twice as hard now. You get hit from the backside more now where you don't see the guy blocking you. You have to work twice as hard in practice. I actually believe that our practices conducted right now are twice as tough as they were 15 years ago at Georgia Tech. The boy has to work twice as hard. You'll see a good scrimmage between our own squad. You'll see our boys who you're interested in play. And I promise you that the money is worth, that where the money goes is worthwhile. The Retarded Children Program is a great program. Now then, I want to talk to you a little bit about the Tech football team. I'm personally concerned, and I feel I know my own team better than most people, and I'm not particularly a pessimist about the football team. Normally, I'm a little optimistic. I actually don't have any idea how this football team is going to do, because uh, we're going to play with, with one man who's going to mean a lot to our football team if he comes through, and I don't know how well he'll play. A boy named Stanley Ginn, who many of you have read about here in Atlanta. Stanley is, is, is a great little character to me. I watched him play when he was in the fifth grade. A friend of mine took me out to E River School and said, I want to show you a great football prospect. And I went and watched him on a Saturday morning before one of my big ball games. And Stanley Ginn was that boy, and he was great that day. And he was great the sixth grade, and he was great right on through. And then he came to me at Tech, and then he, he had some bad things happen to him. He was failing his work. He didn't think he could pass at Georgia Tech. He was in love with a girl over at Butts' school. 
And he and he'd been been practicing been practicing a fast draw and he shot himself in the leg. And he he looked like anything but a quarterback and he was mentally all upset. And he wasn't actually good enough to be our B team quarterback, to say nothing of playing on our varsity. And he got in eligible his sophomore year and he was ready to quit and go home. And somewhere somebody took a new lease on him. It wasn't me, I don't know who did it, but he got over it, decided he wanted to play, wanted to study. And in one month's time, he, he started over anew and started being the Stanley again that I had seen in high school. And since that time, he has improved and he's a good quarterback. And right now, he's the one guy who might take our team.